transmitting to you from Old Heart Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, that's right, this is another episode of Coffee and Contemplation. I happen to be your host, Old Heart. Well, not always the reception I want, but it's usually the reception I get. Actually, it's always the reception I get. <laughs> Either way, I'm sitting here, waking up for the day, trying to ripen up my coconut as best as I can, and I'm plugging some coffee into my system I'm, I'm trying to synthesize stuff I didn't know and I thought you know I just finished up a really great comic book storyline and I just wanted to talk about that today why because if you know me which you definitely probably don't uh, I love comic books comic books comics have been a huge part of my life since I was a kid I was I was raised in a different time with comics, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I understand. I, I am worthy of the applause, but so are you. Don't forget that, dear listeners. Uh, like I said, I was raised in a different time in comics, and uh, even though this is a new, newer storyline um, that we're going to be talking about, it is. it reminds me of... I don't know, just like, it took me, for some reason, I got so into it, it took me back to being so enthralled with com- with like a comic story, like, I just wanted to talk about it to somebody, but I never had anybody around to talk about it with, because nobody else gave a shit. Now, like, there are actually, like, there's, like, online forums, there's people, like, live, in-person people that you can talk to about comics, because everybody digs them, whether it's, like, movie-related or, uh, you know actual comic book art form related um, which comic books I don't even care who you are the whole comic book medium is a different art form from anything else and you have to appreciate that um, either way we're moving on to actually talk about the topic excuse me but let me get some more coffee here I wanted to talk about Marvel's secret empire and I know I'm a little behind because it obviously came out a bit ago but I, like I said, I just picked up the trade paperback version of it, and I finished it, and it was fucking incredible. All right, like, it takes, and this is, I mean, this was, like, one of the huge controversies when it came out, was it takes, I guess, spoilers, this is your official spoiler warning if you're, if we need them for comic books. I don't even fucking know. Either way, so there it is. Da, 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 da. Uh, all right, so, Captain America is a, a Hydra agent in Secret Empire, right? So, it starts off with this crazy whole, like, uh, setup where Captain America is, like, a Hydra agent. He goes and he, and he, like, dips into this pool of mystic, like, water shit or whatever, and, like, it, it basically, they, they, Hydra uses, or no, what was it set up as, uh, uh, the good guys use a cosmic cube to transform everything into like the reality that they want but the reality is that captain america steve rogers i guess is a hydra agent and this mystic goo saved him from saved his mind from like being uh transformed and manipulated so he remembers god damn He remembers that he's a Hydra agent living in the regular Avengers world. So that setup happens right away and you get plugged right into the world where you you basically see his coming out as a Hydra agent, which is insane. He traps all the most powerful players on the outside of the Earth, uh, outside of the Earth's like containment dome field, which is like impenetrable. Captain Marvel's up there beating her fucking fists against it. You can't break it. Uh, He he basically casts this like certain type of magic spell that cloaks new york in absolute darkness 
that even like Stephen Strange can't penetrate. Dagger, I think, is the only light source that that whole area has for the duration of this storyline. And it like drains her life force, basically. Um, and like a lot of the other players are just scattered or beaten or broken. And uh, you pick up in this world, right? So you see this kind of happen and then it kind of like, you, you, you get more in depth into the world and you realize that like, Factions of Avengers have been like just completely busted up a lot of like they're their uh, Captain America not even captain. I can't call him Captain America Steve Rogers his uh, His f like Hydra forces are like hunting in humans uh, a lot of just like terrible shit, right? Um, but you see like one of the greatest like ownership roles uh, like when you see one of the greatest like i am the superhero i think role in the storyline and that actually happens that's why you can't call steve rogers captain america in the storyline because captain america in this storyline is definitively sam wilson there's this great shot where he like Throughout the story, he, he he's kind of like given up on the idea of being a superhero, and he's kind of turned to like just sort of like helping people smuggle themselves across the border to like a, Canada and stuff. And you just have the shot of him where he just like like they just got fucked up, all their shits like out of whack. Like shit, shout out, shout out to Evil L, shout outs to Yellow Teeth, shout outs to Castle Roll, shout outs to Harrison Hannon, and shout outs to Mooner Six, shout outs to uh, Uncaged, shout outs to. Bugatron, shout out to anybody listening out there, uh, you know, good on you, good on you. <laughs> um, but Sam Wilson, he has this shot where he picks up the shield and he's like, he just basically owns the fact that like the world needs, or at least these people need a symbol, need a Captain America, which is like the symbol of leadership for the Avengers. And he just like becomes that. And this is like, you know, on the cut, like, off of the, ta the coattails of like, you know, the, the Captain America, Steve Rogers, Captain America, Sam Wilson storyline runs. And it was just like, for me, it was like a really definitive moment. That's like, that was the moment. Like, I, I don't know why. I know this makes me sound like emotionally weird when it comes to comic books, but like, that was the moment where I accepted Sam Wilson as Captain America. And like, I was just like, damn dude, he's like meant for this. <laughs> but, uh, the artwork in this book is incredible. Uh, a lot of it is done by Len L. Liu. Uh, there's like the first issue and the, and the last issue are, are uh, penciled by Steve McNiven, who had a huge, huge, I think he was the main artist on old the original Old Man Logan series, which is one of my, if not my all time favorite Wolverine storyline. Um, and the story, like just the storytelling, is incredible. It's tight. It's it, the sto like the story has a beginning and an, a definitive middle and a definitive end, and it is like it is purpose driven all throughout. It it's really incredible. It brings you some like really kind of interesting moments that uh, were nodded in at the like nodded to by the MCU. Uh, there's like the whole Hail Hydra scene in Avengers Endgame where Cap, you know, like leans in, he's like, Hail Hydra, bitch. Yeah, he doesn't say bitch, but like, you know, uh, or like the whole Captain America versus Captain America fight scene, which was fucking cool in the movie, but way cooler in the comic book, okay? Because basically evil Steve Rogers, Hydra Steve Rogers has like a, a suit powered by like the fucking cosmic cube and regular Steve Rogers shows back up out of this like cosmic cube universe and he's like, I'm fighting you. I don't know. I feel like Steve Rogers in comic books kind of, I hate to say this, but he kind of sounds like John Wayne mainly because he's got to be stoic as fuck. I'm fighting you there, Cap'n. <laughs> I don't fucking know, man. I hope he doesn't sound like that. Either way, he's not Captain America anymore. Captain America is Sam Wilson. Captain And Sam Wilson is just, like, way cooler. Uh, and he can fly. Not that I'm not going to cap... I wonder if they're just going to transition Steve Rogers' character into a permanent nomad in the MCU. I've, uh, it, but we're not talking about that. So Secret Empire, though, it actually was, like I said, it was one of those, like, I knew I was going to like it, basically, because uh, my old heart co-host, Lucas, kept telling me uh, that, like, I have to read it. I have to read it. I have to pick it up. And so, like, when I did, I started it, but I realized quickly after, like, digging into it, I wanted to take my time, like, to, like, set aside a chunk of time and, like, read the whole thing. Because... 
that's basically how like I just I could taste it I, it's like you know cupping a coffee I could I could taste it right there and I was like oh man I want a full pot of this motherfucker <laughs> but I really recommend it uh, Miles Morales plays a huge uh, role in there Black Widow if you want to get excited about Black Widow I mean like there's tons of, of storylines out there to get you excited about Black Widow I don't mean like that you fucking perverts but if you want to get excited about Black Widow as like an emotional like deep character this uh, does kind of introduce you to like a really interesting driven side of uh, Natasha that kind of plays into like the underlying uh, secrets of her character and just in general um, I yeah I just think it's incredible I think there's a shot uh, another like this shot that was like paid uh, nod to by the MCU was definitely the idea of Captain America wielding uh, Mjolnir um, Thor's hammer, which which isn't like a new not a new idea, definitely not. But it was like vividly shown in a, in in some panels in the book here, and it definitely played out better in the MCU for for Steve Rogers, I'd say. In Secret Empire, it's really fucking funny how I mean funny, but also like tragic because you realize that. As things start crumbling around the, the empire that Steve Rogers has tried to build for Hydra near the end of the book, shit is just like shit. Like fake things have been holding him up as well. Like fake ideals have been holding him up as well. Like one of the pivotal moments in the beginning of the book is when he picks up Thor's hammer and like shows everybody that even though he's for Hydra, he's worthy of wielding this motherfucker. And that makes like everybody that, and then, then like he leaves it sitting in the ground as like kind of like a challenge for anybody else who thinks they're worthy to come try to pick it up and fight him over it. Um, and then later on in the book, you find out that that was all kind of basically just like a clever illusion that I believe Madam Hydra played on him played on Steve Rogers and everybody else to kind of like give him the illusion that he was worthy of wielding that so like that his intentions were so pure for the human race that this must be the right way because isn't that kind of like an ultimate judgment like if you are worthy to wield Thor's hammer like if you are a good fucking person through and through if your intentions are pure enough to like wield this power then it's gotta be right but that's what you find out is that it was, a, it was an illusion, just like the whole Hydra, like group campaign, people, whatever you want to call them, Hydra is uh, ill-intentioned and wrong. And you know what? I highly recommend that you pick up Secret Empire. It's a crazy book. I did a really crappy job describing most of it to you, except for my love of it. I described my love of it to you. And I hope that's enough to get you to go pick up a trade paperback copy at your local comic book store because comic books are awesome. And that being said, this is another episode of Coffee and Contemplation. I'm going to check out. I've ripened up my coconut a little bit more. I hope you have. So go out there. Use your brain for good today. Every day is a good day to ripen up your coconut. And what do we say? Keep your stick on the ice.